Good morning, everyone. I'm Tatiana Dwyer, staff of United Methodist Women's International Program, and I'm also a member of the Voices Planning Team. And welcome, and thank you so much for joining us this morning for our quarterly Voices from the Field event. Voices from the Field is our new virtual series that was created to tell you the story amazing story of UNW global work. The voices brings voices of real people directly to you so that they can tell you the story of United Methodist, uh, of United Women in Faith work with all its complexities, realities, successes, and opportunities. This is also the story of mission giving at work. For international work, our main goals are building women leaders in central conferences, empowering women economically, and providing skills. And today we'll be talking about Liberia, where United Women in Faith has long been involved, working very closely with local conference United Methodist Women, focusing our mission work on women and children. Today, our regional missionary, Finda Kuiva, and members of Liberian country team will share their work with you. And you will hear how your generous gifts help women throughout the world. Please meet the regional missionary, Finda Kuiva, and her team. Thank you, Tatiana. Let me join Tatiana in welcoming you all to our Voices from the Field event as we share our Liberian stories. Your giving is reaching to thousands of women, children, and youth throughout the world, and to Liberia in particular. Your giving is restoring deprived women putting food on the table for families, and restoring dignity to God's children. Today, in telling our Liberian story, we have Mother Muriel Nelson, who will introduce herself and give us the background of the conference United Methodist Women and Young Women in Liberia. Mother Nelson, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. It is good to join you all on Voices from the Field, the United Methodist Women Program with International Ministries. The United Methodist Women Organization in Liberia was birthed out of the vision of eight women who dared to gather in 1869 at Three Month Methodist Episcopal Church in Boston and start the Women's Foreign Missionary Society to raise funds that support persons on the mission field. For over 80 years, the Conference United Methodist Women has been in mission, ministry, and service to women, children, and youth in Liberia. Its first president, was Dr. Anna E. Cooper from 1940 to 1947. And today, I, Dr. Mira V. Nelson, am the current president for the Conference United Methodist Women since 2018. As the fourth of 12 children, it wasn't easy growing up. By 1982, I was 19 and promoted to the 11th grade. Ganta Girls Hostel, where I had lived for four years, had closed. So I had to move to Monrovia. My mother had no job. And where we live, there was no high school. I had no tuition. At the time, my future looked hopeless, but as an active United Methodist youth, 
I had the opportunity of participating in Youth Night at my first annual conference. There, I encountered missionary Dorita Brown, the directress of United Methodist Girls Hostel in Monrovia. She saw something in me. She believed in me. By the end of our conversation, she gave me a home on the hostel and a scholarship to complete my high school education. You invested in my youth. You invested in my education. You, you helped me to overcome the challenges that I was faced with. Today, I am here because of women like you. I stand on the shoulders of many great United Methodist women. Their guide, mentorship, and good counsel led me to be the president I am today. Our motto is not for ourselves, but for others. And our vision is turning faith, hope, and love into action for women, children, and youth. We are a community of women from 20 districts and two circuits. Our purpose is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and develop a creative, supportive fellowship that expands the concept of mission through participation in various ministries to the poor, the homeless, the marginalized, and the destitute. For 11 years, I worked in the young people's department, ages 12 to 30. In 1992, I coordinated the first female awareness retreat, which brought together over 30 young women from across the districts. The retreat gave rise to the establishment of a female awareness committee in the department. And subsequently, the requirement of equal representation of male and female participants for all programs with youth and young adults. This requirement extended to the West Africa Central Conference Young People Ministry. And later, the concept of the Young Women's Network was birthed. Team Liberia was formed in 2021 by the coming together of the United Methodist Women and the Young Women Network. This was possible with the support of the Global United Methodist Women and the supervision of regional missionary Finna Quiva. Today, Team Liberia works closely together in turning faith, hope, and love into action for women, children, and youth. Together, we provide economic empowerment for women and girls through livelihood skills training, scholarship, mentorship, devotional guide development, participation at assemblies, etc. Our main mission is to nurture the young women into United Methodist Women Organization so that they are prepared to continue the legacy when we shall have parted the same. Thank you, Mira, for taking us through the background of the Conference United Methodist Women and Conference United Methodist Young Women. Taking us through the composition of the Liberian team is in ensuring women are economic, economically empowered is amazing. Our esteemed audience also with us today is one of our dynamic young woman matter who will introduce herself and tell us the major issues women and young women in Liberia are facing. Mata, you are welcome. Thank you so much, Mulatina. My name is Mato B. Dobo. I am the vice president, the first vice president 
for the conference United Methodist Young Adult Fellowship in Liberia. And I'm also the coordinator for Young Women of West Africa Central Conference. Today, I will be discussing major issues facing women and young women in Liberia. Major issues faced by women and young women in Liberia include, but not limited to human trafficking, teenage pregnancy and violence against women. Beginning with human trafficking, many women and girls have fallen victims. Their economic hardship, false promises to provide foreign jobs and scholarships, search for greener pastures, have led many women and young women to their early death of victims to human trafficking. In 2021, the United Methodist Women Human Trafficking Project worked with more than 150 women and young women who were victims of suspected human trafficking within the three regions of the Liberia Annual Conference. They got livelihood skills training and full attempts. Also, seven of those victims, young women, who were in a desperate state and needed immediate attention were taken to a withholding center for a period of nine months. While in the center, they received psychosocial counseling, medical support, additional life day host skill training, and scholarships. Those young women graduated and moved out of the withholding center last month, May 2022, with great testimonies, but new hope for a brighter future. The issue of violence against women is on the increase. According to the Gender Inequality Index, a tool designed to measure peace in societies, about two out of 10 Liberians endorse domestic violence against women and children, and one out of 10 endorses sexual abuse, including rape. Some of the reasons associated with this is linked to the increase of women on the one hand and men's perception of loss of power and authority on the other hand. Some men's urge to assert dominions is aggravated by higher levels of alcohol and drugs abuse and a tendency to worse learned during the, during the civil war in addition to women's financial dependence on men. On the issue of sexual violence, rape remains one of the most frequently reported crimes in Liberia. According to Liberia's Ministry of Gender and Development and the Sexual Gender-Based Violence Unit, the total of 600 cases were recorded between June to August 2021 and this number increased daily. Also, teenage pregnancy is another serious issue. According to a UNICEF 2020 report on the health situation in Liberia, one in every three adolescents is pregnant before age 18. The following factors, poverty, peer pressure, traditional cultural practices of early marriage, lack of enforcement and poor awareness of sexual reproductive health among young women have been identified as some of the causes for the high rate of teenage pregnancy in Liberia. Let's listen to Betty's story. My name is Betty Tawan. I was 11 years old when I first saw my period. No one educated me about that. At age 15, my mom designated me to take care of my uncle who was sick at his residence. My uncle never was a white man who had two sons and the one who was 27 years of age expressed his interest in me. I shared that with my mother and she encouraged me to fall in love with the guy. She then, and she encouraged me to fall in love with the guy, so I did. But the guy had many girlfriends. For a year, 
I was afraid to have an intercourse with him. He then reported me to my mother who blasted at me and encouraged me to have sex with the guy. She explained that was the only way I could love him back since he was providing for our home. So I did and I got pregnant. Every day the guy sexually abused me. I couldn't tell my mom I was pregnant, but she still noticed me after a few months and caught my boyfriend's attention to it. Both had planned to abort the pregnancy because the boy was not prepared and ready for a baby. I found out about their plans through the doctor during a visit. I also found out that I was HIV positive too. Upon hearing this, I threatened to kill myself, but the doctor counseled with me. I took the decision never to return to my family near my boyfriend's house. Today, my son is two years and I live with the doctor's sister. I'm living a life of a prostitute and also selling alcohol because that's the only business the woman is into. I have dropped out of school, but I'm still trusting that God can rescue me from this situation by learning a skill to sustain me and my child. The reality here is there are many Betty's, even some of them have worse situations than Betty in Liberia. There is a need for Liberia to provide a safe house for women and young women, including children who are victims of violence of all forms. They also provide economic empowerment on scholarship opportunities for those victims of the healing process. Thank you so much. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Mata. Thank you so much, Mata, for warming our hearts. Heartbreaking stories, right? Praying that our audience will continue to give to United Women in Faith Mission, giving work around the world. If you are just joining us, this is our usual voices from the field, and today we are focusing on Liberia. Mother Muriel Nelson, the current women's president, gave us the historical background of Conference United Methodist Women and Conference United Methodist Young Women, and how the formation of the country team is impacting women, children, and young people through the leadership development and the economic empowerment initiative. Also, Mata, one of our dynamic young women, just highlighted the major issues women and young women are facing in Liberia, ending with a heartbreaking story. Again, with us today is Mother Pauline Roberts, directress, or you can call, you can say, coordinator of women's work in the United Methodist Women's Organization, Liberia Episcopal Area. Mother Robert will now take us through the historical relationship between Conference United Methodist Women and uh, United Women in Faith. Mother Robert, let's hear from you. Thank you, Penda. Thank you, Penda. The relationship with the United Methodist Women, now United Women in Faith, has been very excellent. Below our missions, collaborations and partnership throughout the decade John and John between the USA United Methodist Women and the women of the Episcopal area. The construction of girls, hostel, Ganta, Banka, Monrovia. We had Mother Saladu Brown and Dorietta Brown who were the first directresses. The construction of the Women's Center. We have the Functional Girls Hostel. We have the Ganta Girls Hostel, Banka Girls Hostel. Old Monrovia Girls Hostel. Monrovia Boys Hostel. Training Center. 
the construction of a training center in Monrovia. Through this training center, many women and girls' lives have been transformed and are using these skills to support their lives and their families. The United Methodist Women Day Care Center has also been supported over the years. In the last four years, the daycare has been closed for renovation. We are still advocating for the construction of an early childhood center. The Women of Christian Service, United Methodist Women, now United Women in Faith, obtain land for mission work and ministries, now being utilized by the Conference United Methodist Women. The United Methodist Women in the USA have over the years supported ministries for missionaries and women, children, and young girls. These missionaries' presence have been left throughout the Episcopal area. They have left lasting impact on the lives of families. Since the 18th century, we have been in partnership and good relationship. This partnership and good relationship supported Marjorie Brown and others who came to Liberia and lived out their lives in service to women, children, and youth. On the overall, we have a cordial working relationship as relates to our work and on the lines of communication. We appreciate the good working relationship and understanding of sharing with one another as pertaining to our ministries and goals in achieving our purpose. The United Methodist Women, now United Women of Faith, has been our guide when it comes to working with women, children, and youth. Thank you. Thank you, Mother Robert, for taking us You're through welcome. this beautiful relationship story. Indeed, the United Women in Faith legacy is also in Liberia. We in Liberia will surely not forget this. Just so that we do not lose sight of the relationship between Conference United Methodist Women and United Women in Faith, let us have again Mother Muriel Nelson to tell us how important is that relationship and why. Over to you, Mother Nelson. Thank you, Fina. The relationship between the women in the USA and Liberia is very cordial and important through the following ways. One, through the connectionism of the United Methodist Church from the local unit to the global church. Two, through our faith and relationship in Jesus Christ. Three, through our sisterhood. We are sisters in Christ. We are sisters in partnership. We are sisters in mission. We are a powerful team in this great ministry to women, girls, children, and youth around the world. Four, our relationship is important through our purpose. It calls us to be a community of creative, supportive fellowship, expanding the concept of mission. Our relationship is important through our mission. This relationship over decades has strengthened our partnership for mission as we seek to live out our vision of turning faith, hope and love into action for women, children and youth around the world. Together, we are stronger. Why is this relationship important? This relationship is important for several reasons. One, because God has called all of us to go and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Two, because we need to unite, partner, and be a team of sisterhood in this work of ministry to women, children, and youth. Three, because we are sisters. 
And we need each other to reach the world for Jesus Christ. As we build schools, hospitals, hostels, training centers, provide scholarships, mentorship, leadership, economic empowerment, spiritual growth, and social justice action, we connect God's children around the world and transform and impact lives to the honor and glory of God. Together, we are a formidable force. The need to build on each other's strength is very vital. The need to see each other as sisters through our relationship with Jesus Christ cannot be overemphasized. We are because you are. Thank you. Indeed, we are because you are. I'm going to take you through the importance of leadership development and the economic empowerment program and the role of the country team, what we do hope to achieve. Like you've heard from Tatiana Mfinda Kwiwa, a United Women in Faith Regional Missionary, working with young people for the past years. Presently, I am working with women, children, and young people in Africa, focusing on Liberia. Through the Leadership Development and Economic Empowerment Initiative led by United Women in Faith staff, Betty Gittins and Tatiana Duai. Leadership development has identified potential leaders like Muriel, Pauline, and Mata, who are capable of navigating through challenges. It has equipped leaders with skills that can help them enhance productivity, set role models for present and future leaders. leaders thereby encouraging them to improve their leadership skills and ensure that any leadership gap are avoided, especially in the face of challenge in the leadership panel. Leadership development program have proven to be substantial in improving Conference United Methodist Women organization in Liberia, which works as a great moral booster, help leaders starting with the local units to make informed decision and enhance positive engagement. Economic empowerment in different ways has helped vulnerable women and young women who were more dependent of social benefits or goodwill support. By empowering women and young women through skill training, to become economically or financially self-sufficient, they are removed from social or welfare benefits and become more productive members, not just to themselves, but to society as a whole. Including Liberia as a country team into the existing country team has created more room for women, especially grassroots women, older women, as well as young women, to develop in their leadership role in their communities and also now be economically empowered to be considered in the society they find themselves. The country team is made up of local women, local working team on the ground who plan, lead and coordinate local needs assessments in the country. The team work with local women to prioritize the needs and design locally appropriate programs. The team consists of Conference United Methodist Women and Young Women Leadership, the regional missionaries like in this case for Liberia, myself in the Kiwa, one local reporter and United Women in Faith National staff, Betty and Tatiana. So you see, we work as a team reaching out reaching out to women children and young people women's participation and leadership now bring a significant change on issues that affect women 
young women and society at, at large. Some issues include injustice, not treating them like their male counterparts, discrimination because they were not able to contribute to any developmental project, maltreatment, abuse because they cannot provide their own basic needs, rape, violence, traffic, and gender inequalities as highlighted by Mata. Because of the leadership development and economic empowerment programs being funded by United Women in Faith, they are now powerful advocates for the integrational collaboration and accountability towards a more just, sustainable, and equal world in their different regions. Like the country teams, the Liberia country team comprised of four powerful women and four powerful dynamic young women, plus the team local reporter, making a total of nine dynamic women who are committed to reaching out to every woman, no matter where they are or who they are. The Liberia country team, team conducted workshop on small business management and skill training to empower young women in Grand Bassa, River Cess, Kakata Famiti River, and Gompa District. The program targeted 32 participants in 16 regions. Due to the mobilization and awareness done, 65% of which five were male, were trained in coral bleach making, tar dyeing, women and girls handbag production and liquid soap making. The training meant for women did not only benefit women, but also five men were given the opportunity of learning a life skill that is presently giving them resource to provide for their families, whom the team hope to follow up on. The country team is not just limited to women in the bigger town, but are committed to reaching every grassroots woman in every remote area. It is my hope and prayer that the team reach, as the team reach out to women, will be economically empowered to address the issues of independence that is responsible for the so many abuse women and young women face. By the special grace of God, the team will be doing their training for transformation this year to equip them more to reach out all because you, United Women in Faith, gave to mission giving or mission work. Thank you, United Women in Faith, for all your support to women, children, and young people, especially to us in Liberia. And I know in discussing all of that, I am sure our audience, you all will, will be interested in knowing what is our future plan as Conference United Methodist Women or Young Women in Liberia. So I'm going to kindly ask Mother Nelson again to please come and take us through the future plan for both the conference women and young women. Mother Nelson, you're welcome. Thank you, Fina Kweva. I'm happy to be here to provide the plans for the future of the Conference United Methodist Women and the Conference United Methodist Young Women. They are the man managing the United Methodist Women properties, strengthening relationships and partnerships, building bridges between young people and the United Methodist Women by providing mentorship to women and girls, support poverty reduction through spiritual, social, and economic growth of women and girls, connect the church to women and girls in the rural areas through all activities. So this is transportation that helps us get to far reach places on difficult roads. The property management committee is a team of women with diverse backgrounds from all districts. They provide support in the management of the United Methodist Women property. We need to develop the property to support the mission and ministry to women, children, and youth. 
In strengthening our relationship and partnership, we work from the local unit to the global community. We will continue to be in partnership from the local unit to the global women. Together we make disciples of Jesus Christ. Together we empower women and girls. Together we care for our inhabited world. We will build bridges between young women, young people, and United Methodist women. We will do so by involving more young women in the women's organization, providing mentorship for young women, supporting young women through economic empowerment, leadership skills, Bible studies, scholarships, psychosocial services, and providing a white space for young women network coordinator. We will join them, reach out to the women and young women from the rural areas and work to provide opportunities to remove girls and children from the streets. Empowerment workshops, we will, we will support poverty reduction through social, spiritual and economic growth of women and girls. The Bible study, prayers and worship experiences are essential for spiritual growth. Environmental justice, fellowship and recreation are creative ways to develop social growth and connection. And providing economic empowerment through life skills training will create pathways to poverty reduction for women and girls. Connecting the church to rural ministry through the United Methodist Women Three Regional Villages. The United Methodist Women Villages, when constructed, will provide job opportunities and services to women, children, and youth through the following ways. The safe house, the hostel, the rehabilitation center for at risk, a clinic, a conference hall, a dining hall and administrative building, a vocational center, a mobility cut shop and prayer guiding, a K-12 grade school and recreation center, an early childhood center, a playground, and a child rescue center with lodging of dormitories. Exposing rural women and girls to ministry, opportunity and access to education, healthcare, and family life. And last but not the least, the issue of transportation is very serious for connecting with the rural areas. We travel rough roads to rural Liberia. The cost for transportation is high. The need for road worthy vehicles is urgent. Thanks, United Methodist, United Women in Faith, for your support over the years. Thank you very much. Hello, and thank you so much to Finda, Marta, Muriel, Pauline. We love you and your work, and we're so grateful. Let us know, friends, if you have questions, please um, put them in the chat. We can read them out loud on mute. Come along and, and tell us what you're thinking and praying for with our sisters. You'll also have a chance to share privately in um, in the breakout rooms uh, in a moment. Any questions? Those are big, impressive goals to improve lives. Thank you for sharing. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. What is the time frame on that beautiful resource center you were looking at? What is that time frame? Mira, 
Yes. So I thought we were taking questions in the break room. We have um, in the next four to five years. And where are you all located? Mostly Monrovia. Uh, where where are the headquarters there? The headquarters is in Monrovia, it's Cinco Taichi Street, Monrovia. Yes, there is a plan. The daycare center. Is there a, um, a plan to reopen the beautiful daycare center? Yes, there are plans to open the daycare center, but we need to reconstruct or rehabilitate. Yes, we have Fred's members in, in Harrisburg. Harrisburg. I'm from Harrisburg. We have members in Harrisburg. I'm from Harrisburg. Oh, beautiful. Welcome, Harrisburg, we love you. <laughs> Thank you. Am I missing questions? Please stay on the chat and you will have a chance to, um, to meet in a slightly smaller group with our sisters from Liberia and working with Liberia. We have a question about hygiene and menstruation and how do young people have to do Yes, we, um, part of what we do in the training center is to um, produce the mental plan for girls that are not able to uh, afford or they can't afford that. So we do that and we, we have trained women in all of our districts to make them for themselves. Currently, we don't have any non-for-profit that we work with. We are only working with um, the Ministry of Gender, uh, um, Children, and Social Protection, which is the government line ministry, and also with Ministry of um, Labor that has to do with the human trafficking issue. So those two um, government agencies we've worked with, and United Methodist Women and UMCOR, but on the grounds, we have not worked with any NGO. And the Women NGO Secretariat, we are part of the Women NGO Secretariat of Liberia. I didn't get the question. How do you get the men involved and those not already involved? <laughs> For the well, training. Our, our program, um, what we do is we go on the radio and do a um, radio talk show and we invite the community to our training. And so everyone is invited. And through that means the popular awareness when people come, we welcome them and we engage them in, the particip in participation. And so that way we have had men coming in and participating. And that has been very helpful for us. How stable is the government right now? Is it a, a working and workable partnership with the government? The volume is not clear. The question. Uh, the question is about the workable government. How 
Stable is the government. Oh, how stable is the work of the government? <laughs> well, on a general picture, I would say that the government is trying, but our work is with women, children, and youth, and we, we share with the Ministry of Gender, and we share with the human trafficking through the Ministry of Labor. But there are bigger work to be done. And with our children on the street, there are more work to be done, earnestly. Someone is looking for a, a partner in micro lending. What do you suggest we connect with there? Okay, um, we will be glad to partner in, in the microfinance because we are building women capacity to sustain their small businesses. And in our last planning retreat, we were earmarking people that we can work with to help support the mark, I mean the small businesses of our women. And so we will be glad for that opportunity. That's all the questions I see. Uh, let me ask my sisters to take it away as we go into our breakout rooms and get more personalized and um, back and forth discussion. Thank you again to our sisters. Blessings on your work and great gratitude for everyone who partners with you and with one another. Thank you, Mary Beth. United Women in Faith's work in Liberia is making a difference in the lives of women, children, and youth. We, that's very apparent of what we heard. Uh, Dr. Uh, Muriel Nelson said it, together we are a powerful team. Um, and I don't think we appreciate how important our mission giving is. It is what drives the mission of United Women in Faith, the work that FINDA is doing as a regional missionary, the economic empowerment for the women and the girls through the livelihood skills training and all that they're doing. The member giving affords scholarships. Did you hear the scholarships, the mentorships, the nurturing that's going on? We invest in women, and because of this, because of this faithful giving and of our prayers and our financial gifts, we are making a difference. So please place these stories on your heart to help you remember what you're going to do, to inspire you to take it on as continual commitment to partner in mission together. We are a powerful team. Let it be so. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you so much. What an informative morning. Today, our regional missionary, Finda Kiwa, and the members of the Liberian country team shared their work and hopes for the future with us. The historical relationship between United Women of Faith and the United Methodist Women of Liberia has spanned over several decades. Our partnership lives on today and your generous gifts will continue to provide mentorship to women and girls, support poverty reduction through economic empowerment, and strengthen the leadership potential of women and girls. I hope you enjoyed and was inspired by this morning's presentation. Thank you for joining us this morning. We also want to thank my colleague, Tatiana Dwyer, our regional missionary, Finn Kiwa, 
and the Liberia team, Muriel Nelson, Pauline Roberts, and Martha Dogo, and the entire mission giving team for organizing this event. See you at the next Voices from the Field conversation. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.